Hello guys, welcome back to Technical Machine, where today we are going to create this, a 4-bit register. Don't worry, it might look daunting at first, but I will teach you step by step how to do it in digital, digital, uh, sorry for my voice today, it hurts, for um, Digital Logic Sim by Sebastian Leg. So here we go. So first what you're going to do is get an AND gate. Now an AND gate and a NOT gate are two of the basic resources you get when you're first starting out this simulation. So let's focus on the AND gate first. So we have our two input nodes, input 1, input 2. We can hook those up to A and B of our AND gate and hook the output to our output node over here. So what happens if we turn one of these output nodes on? Nothing. It is called an AND gate. Two outputs need to be on for it to have an output. And as you can see, this holds up to the truth. So if I delete this AND gate, hook up an AND gate Hook up these two AND gates over here and a NOT gate, it basically just inverts the signal. If one of these AND gates is on, if one of these, correction, if one of these is on, nothing happens. If both of them is on, it supplies power to the NOT gate, meaning if it's powered on, it's not going to give an output to its output node. So this is what we call a NAND gate. So a NAND gate. So now that we have a NAND gate, it seems pretty useful. So what we can do is we can hook up these two inputs to the NAND gate, and it will do the same thing. If one of them is off, one of the input nodes are off, it's going to produce an output node. If, one of them, if both of them are off, it's still producing output. Both of them have to be on for it to stop producing an output. But what would happen if we were to reverse this using two NOT gates? So let's get our two NOT gates over here and hook them up to our input nodes and essentially hook them up to our NAND gate. If one of them is on, the NAND is going to be on. If both of them are on, the NAND is still going to be on. One of, if both of them are off, it's going to be off on the output. But the NOTs are still going to be producing a current to our NAND gate. We have essentially created an OR gate. OR gates is also pretty useful. We can use them for selective things in our process. Remember, one of them is on, or both of them are on, either OR are on, then we essentially have our OR gate. Able for that. All right, let's take a moment to think about something that's pretty important this is to computers. a pretty important numbers. circuitry in computers. In the decimal system that we know and love. We have a decimal system. The decimal system goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What computers use is called binary. Binary is what is within this 4-bit register. It's how we add and subtract numbers with using a 4-bit register. There are 8-bit registers, 16-bit registers, maybe even 32-bit registers. I do not know. I'm not too advanced with computers, but I am creating a digital logic simulation with Sebastian Legg's digital logic simulation. So it's pretty advanced stuff. The sum bit will be zero in that case. So if we have, okay, so now that we have our NAND chip and an OR chip, what we can do is we can hook up input 1 to the top of our OR chip and we can hook the other side of our input to our NAND gate and then we do the same thing it's the same principles for the other one now what we it can then use essentially create is an XOR gate but we have to do one more thing before it turns into an XOR. We put an AND gate to check if both inputs are on, put an output. 
So right now it's not going to output anything as per the fact that the outputs are not on. So if we hit one on, it puts an output. If both are on, it does not put an output due to the fact due to the fact that this is a selective output. Mm -hmm. Due to the fact that this is a selective output. This is an XOR gate. I like this color for the XOR gate. It's a 000 on RGB scale. So that is just an XOR gate. The previous step to four bit numbers that we have. So now what we can do is we can use our new XOR gate. So we can create another input. Let's call this input 3, not 4, 3. And we can have our two. Now, we're actually going to change this. Since binaries, we need to add and carry and subtract numbers in order to get outputs. So we're going to call this carry. And we're going to rename the output to sum. So we're going to hook up the X XOR in a complicated circuit, not too complex. So we will set this to off for now. Then we will have our inputs number 2 and input 2 for the XOR. Now we will need another XOR gate. We will then get an AND gate to check if both the input up here, inputs number 1 and inputs number 3 are on. This will uh, be shown in the circuitry a little bit later. We will hook it up to our XOR gate as input number 2 or input number 3. Then we will hook up this one, the input number 3, to the input B of our AND gate. What we now do is hook up the output of our XOR gate to the input 1 of our XOR gate. That has already been done before. So now we will hook up the output of this XOR gate for coming in from input 1 to input A of our AND gate. We will now bring out another AND gate. This AND gate will be hooked up to input 1 of our, out of our inputs. We will hook up input 1 to B of our AND gate. What we have right now is not a full circuit, but will eventually be complete. Once it, compl once it is complete, I will demonstrate how this works. So now, what we need to do is add an OR gate. Now we need to hook up input number 2 to input A of our AND gate. Now, we have to connect both inputs of our AND gate to the in out, uh, inputs of our OR gate, inputs 1 and input 2. Then, we hook up the output of our OR gate to the carry bit and the output of our XOR gate to our SUM bit. This is essentially the adder. This is the adder. What you have created is called an adder. That's why it has three inputs, the sum and the carry bit. We will not talk about the adder until later. We have two XOR gates. The XOR gates are the selective OR gates. We want to check if the inputs of our, of our input number two is powered on. If so, then it goes through the XOR gate, passes through this XOR gate, and is put in as the sum output. Let's regard these as LEDs for now. So this is our LED, it's lit up, and it's passed to our AND gates. Now as you can see our AND gates over here are not lighting up. That's due to the fact that they need two inputs to light up. So say we power this one on. This is our carry signal. It signifies that we probably have an overflow in the equation and that it cannot signify any more bits. 
So that is an issue. Now, if we do this, this is a total overflow. So we will turn off input number three, and as you can see, our carry bit is lit up from this AND gate. So what we can do right now is delete, is you can create this as a chip and name it adder. So I will delete all of this for now. And the sum three inputs when it was one, lit and the sum one. should be one and the carry should be one. And it looks like it's all working, so I'll give so it a this name. Is our adder. And then what I'd like to do is take this <coughs> adder we've made and use it to construct. So this is our adder. Don't worry, we'll get to the four bit register very soon. So right now we need to create way more inputs. So I'm just gonna move input number one, two, three, and create input four. Move it down a little bit. Input five. Input six. Input seven. Input eight. And we have our carry signal. The carry signal signifies, do we need to carry a number? So this is how you make a 16-bit register, or actually, correction, a 4-bit register, which can display 15 values in decimal from binary. So as you could see, if we hit this number, this would be 1. This would signify 1. This would signify 1 of this stage. So 1 plus 1 is what we want to add as our output over here. So we would actually need is our output number 3, output number 4, and our carry to signify two things. If we're carrying a number or if we are uh, having a total overflow, meaning we can't store all the values. They are our sum, carry, but we want to rename these as output 1 and output 2. We have our output 1 and our output 2. Outputs 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we can do now is we've constructed the basis of a 4-bit of a adder. So we get our 1 adder, 2 adders, 3 adders, 4 adders. This qualifies us as 4 bits. What we do now is take our carry signal into input number 3, and we take the carry signal of every adder and hook them up into input number 3 in a chain. So basically, if our carry signal is on, it turns on the carry signal for every single adder. But as you can see, it won't do that right now. So we Please want to construct a 4-bit adder, adder. Capable of taking these two 4-bit numbers that we have as our... Take, uh, so the 4-bit adder, one is, when it's fully wired, will be capable of taking all the 4-bit numbers, these are 4-bits over here, all our 4-bit numbers, and calculating the 4-bit sum as the output over here. Now inputs, and goes into the carry input of the next one, and so on down the chain. So basically, now what we need to do is take our sum and wire it into, into our outputs. So the sum of the topmost adder will go into output number one, and so on and so forth. I know my wiring does not look nice, so please forgive me for that. After that, we'll finally need to connect up the 2-bit okay. inputs. Finally, I'll need to connect up the two 4-bit inputs. So now, we will hook up our input number 8 to the middle input of our first adder, input number 2. And we will do that for every single one. Now, we will hook up Correct. the bottom-most input number 4 
to inputs number one of our first adder, and so on and so forth. So now what we have is our 4-bit register. Amazing, right? Yes, I know. We got all this way. So what? how does this work, you might be asking yourself. Well, as you can see, if we hit 1, this is 1, our output is 1. Perfect, right? Yeah, we know. This is 2, this is 3, this is 4, so on and so forth. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. This signifies our eight digits over here. So say we wanted to add two plus uh, one plus one. So we, this is one over here. So this is one and then one. It gives us two on the output number two or output number three correction, output number three. But say we wanted to add five. This signifies five plus one. Five plus one would give us six as this is 6, then in binary, translate it to decimal. Pretty cool, right? So now we can create a chip, and this chip is our 4-bit register. Yes, it's a pretty chunky beast. So what we can do is hook up all our inputs. Hold on, guys, I got food. As we can hook up all of our inputs, Input number 8, input number 7, and so on, so forth. And it will just act like a normal 4-bit register. I know, how amazing is that? We created a 4-bit register, so why don't you guys give yourself a pat on the back for learning today on how to create a 4-bit register. You guys did awesome. So if we just hook up all these outputs, it should still be the same. This is 1, this is 5, and this has been technical machinery. No, this is actually 6, but this has been technical machinery. I hope you guys liked the video, and have a nice day. You guys learned how to make a 4-bit register in this video. If you want to know more, check out Sebastian's leg. His video will be in the description below and itch.io link to his simulation will be in the link below check him out he's a great guy he's doing a series on how computers remember and how computers work so i hope you guys like enjoy subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye